Hey guys, today's video is part 2 of the Unsung Zero series where I take a look into the unspectacular drivers, teams and circuits that never had much success in Formula 1. The team in question that I'm covering today is a team that saw success in other forms of motorsport, but never in the pinnacle series of open wheel racing. Walter Brunn was a very respected name in motorsport during the mid 1980s after his team won the World Sports Car Championship in 1986. Derek Bell drove Porsche 956Bs and 962Cs to victory, but a couple of years later, Brunn partnered with Gianpaolo Pavanello, who owned the Euro Racing Team. Pavanello had previously ran the Alfa Romeo Works operation from 1982 to 1985 in Formula 1 and oversaw iconic moments like Andre de Cesare's going fast without crashing every 5 seconds to take pole position in the 1982 US Grand Prix West at Long Beach. Pavanello and Braun decided to combine their team's efforts into one, and thus, Euro Racing and Brunn Motorsport became Euro Brunn and joined Formula 1 in 1988. The ER188 chassis, designed by Mario Tolentino, was powered by a Cosworth DFZ engine, a derivation of the legendary DFV engine that first appeared in F1 over 20 years prior in 1967, and it produced between 575 and 590 horsepower. The 1988 car will be driven by the reigning Formula 3000 champion Stefano Modena and the Argentine ex Brun Motorsport sports car driver Oscar Larauri. Larauri had been a prodigy during his early racing career, having been coached by five time F1 champion Juan Manuel Fangio. However, his shot in the spotlight never came until moving to Eurobrun, by which time he was 34 years old. Modena in the other car, however, was basically what Larauri was 10 years ago, except actually being successful, having won F3000 in 1987. He also drove for Brabham in the last race of the 1987 season and impressed in qualifying before retiring in the race due to exhaustion. Eurobrun's campaign in 1988 got off to a decent ish start as both cars got out of pre qualifying for the first round in Yaka Paragua and Modena was 24th, with Larauri 8 temps behind in 26th. Larauri failed to complete the opening lap due to suffering electrical failure, whereas Modena didn't do much better, retiring on lap 20 with engine failure. A double retirement in the first race of the season was followed by an Imola race which saw Larauri fail to qualify and Modena qualify in 26th. In the race, Modena finished 8 laps down on race winner Ayrton Senna and was not classified due to not completing 90% race distance. This meant that on average, the Italian was 11 seconds a lap off the leader's pace during the race. It got even worse for the team, as Modena was excluded from the 3rd and 4th rounds of the season due to technical infringements. Lurari qualified 18th in Monaco, but retired on lap 14 after brake problems. He then qualified 26th and last in Mexico before scoring the team's first race finish in 13th place, four laps down on race winner Alain Prost. Modena was back for the Canadian Grand Prix and instantly qualified a season best 15th, with Lurari 1.6 seconds behind in 24th. The Argentine driver retired on lap 8 due to chassis problems, but Modena managed to secure the second finish of Eurobrun's F1 tenure by finishing 12th. Then, the team went on a semi-decent run of results after a double retirement in Detroit, as Modena finished 14th in Paul Ricard, then 12th in Silverstone. Lurari was 16th in Hockenheim, and Modena was 11th in Hungary. Then after that best result of the season, narrowly missing out on a top 10 result, Spa, Monza and Estoril saw Modena fail to qualify, with Lurari not even getting out of pre-qualifying. Modena finished 13th in Jerez, but both cars failed to qualify in the second to last race in Suzuka, before they both retired from the final race in Adelaide. Lurari's performances throughout the season were lambasted by many, with Walter Brunt even trying to replace him with Christian Danner midway through the season. Honestly though, what do you expect when you put a sports car driver in an F1 car for the first time at the age of 34 and put him alongside a young prodigy? Lurari was obviously out of a drive for 1989 and so was Modena who was off to Brabham. The team downsized to one car to save money and they also downsized their staff, basically having only a few engineers on hand at a race weekend. The Swiss driver Gregor Foytek drove a singular chassis, but the season was a hopeless write-off. Foytek only got out to pre-qualifying once at the season opener in Brazil. He then failed to pre-qualify in the next 10 races consecutively, and Foytek quit the team following the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa, where he was 6.4 seconds off getting out of the Friday morning session. From Monza onwards, Foytek was replaced by a returning Lauri. So with him on track, there'll be 5 chicanes in total at the Monza circuit instead of the usual 4 except he could only be a mobile nuisance in pre-qualifying as he couldn't better the team's results. He extended the Eurobrun team's failure to pre-qualify streak to 15 races by the end of the season in Adelaide. 1989 was an apocalyptically bad season with no starts, 1 DNQ and 15 DMPQs, that did not pre-qualifies. 1990 would start even worse as Euro Racing left the Eurobrun partnership, however the team maintained the name Eurobrun. 
Another thing they maintained was the woeful ER189 chassis, which was brought in midway through the previous season, and the team expanded to a two-car outfit just like they had in 1988. Brazilian Roberto Moreno joined the team after racing for fellow terrible backmarker team Coloni the previous year. The other car was piloted by the experienced F3000 driver Claudio Langes. Moreno miraculously got out of pre-qualifying in the opening round in Phoenix, then in a chaotic qualifying session got an inconceivable 16th place grid slot ahead of Nigel Mansell in his Ferrari and several other better-funded teams. The car and Moreno held on during the race and finished 13th, albeit five laps down on race winner Ayrton Senna. This result momentarily put Eurobrun in 9th place in the constructor standings. However, it was back down to earth in Brazil, as both cars failed to get out of pre-qualifying. Then in qualifying for the San Marino Grand Prix, Moreno qualified in 24th place, but failed to complete the first lap due to throttle problems. However, after the rounds in Monaco and Canada where Moreno got out of pre-qualifying but never made those 26 car grids for the main race, the team failed to get out of the dreaded Friday morning session from the 6th round in Mexico until the 14th round in Jerez, by which time Walter Brun had grown disgruntled with Formula 1 and withdrew more and more funding. The team withdrew from F1 completely following the round in Spain and missed the final two rounds of the season in Suzuka and Adelaide. Roberto Moreno would go to Benetton for the last two races of the season, replacing Alessandro Nannini, who had suffered career-ending injuries in a helicopter crash, and he would go on to drive for the likes of Andrea Moda and Forti, which were other underprepared Minnow teams. Claudio Langes, however, who had failed to get out of pre-qualifying at all for the team, never raced in F1 again, and keeps the unwanted record of the most race entries without getting past pre-qualifying till today, with 14. The Brun team continued into other racing categories in 1991, but ran out of money before the 1992 season. The team showed initial promise in 1988, and had they continued on that trajectory, they could have lasted well into the future and become a good midfield team. However, funding constraints really halted the team's development. They also had a habit of hiring slow or underprepared drivers like Lowry and Langes, who just weren't cut out for F1, and that definitely didn't help their cause. Anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you for watching. I'll be back in a couple of days with my next video, but for now, I'll see you all later, and I hope you have a great day. I've been Nedzo, and I'll see you all later. Bye!